to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And then, the next point of his discourse was how believers now walk worthy of that calling. That's the next level now. He teaches them that you are living in the cosmos and it is important to understand how to walk and live a life that is worthy and befitting of your calling. That if you veer off from this standard, you have betrayed the, the potential and the power that comes with that finished work. And then he wraps up by teaching us that there is an adversary. Are we together now? And he encourages us to learn how to stand against the wiles of the enemy. He discusses something we know theologically uh, to be the whole armor of God. He says to put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to quench or overcome or succumb the wiles, the strategies of the enemy. And so there is a provision in scripture that guides believers to know how to live in challenging times. Most believers do not have the wisdom and the intelligence to live in times of trouble and in times of turbulence. Hallelujah. Especially for those of us who God has granted the privilege of living in this side of the country. It is important that we are equipped. There are people who by reason of location they have an advantage and they may not necessarily see the necessity of teachings like this but it is important that God's people receive a spiritual orientation on how to live and to thrive at times like this so I'm going to be sharing with you very briefly as a charge tonight be exposing us to four strategies as revealed from scripture that would help us to survive and to thrive and to walk in dominion even at perilous times very quickly number one the first strategy that the bible gives the believer is to be strong in the lord ephesians chapter 6 please verse 10 be strong in the Lord it says finally brethren be strong in the Lord please can you give us amplified is it possible to get amplified of this rendition amplified gives a very beautiful rendition of this verse it says in conclusion let me read for you be strong in the Lord it says be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength from him that strength which his boundless might provides draw your strength be empowered through the consciousness of your union with him the first survival strategy that the bible gives us at times as this is to be strong in the lord and daniel chapter 11 from verse 32 now gives us further clarity on the basis of our strength in this kingdom daniel 11 and verse 32 that if you want to be strong it says but the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits so daniel connects to the revelation of paul by letting us know that if you desire strength and stamina and capacity it is derived from your knowledge of god is someone learning now you are strong in the lord to the degree to which you are rooted in the knowledge of him most people do not know god 
the ignorance of who God is, the boundless might that he has will keep you in fear and defeat. You may never be able to draw strength, especially at times like this. All you need to do is to go on social media or put on your television or radio or whatever and one news after the other, one kidnap, one bomb blast, one threat and all of those kinds of things. And when you are consumed by those information and you do not know God, chances are excellent that you will not have any strength in you again. Are we together? Prophesy to yourself, say be strong. So we draw our strength in this kingdom from our knowledge our knowledge paul said but i i mean that was peter now but i know whom i have believed he says and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day there is something about god when you know when you know god and you understand his character fear dies permanently from your life hear what i'm telling you now look up please the Bible lets us know that the prophet, prophet Elisha, that he sat down and all kinds of people came, the army, they came and surrounded him and he was, he was sitting in confidence and his servant was so fearful, there was something the prophet knew that was the basis of his confidence. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. What, I, I cannot fear what man would do to me many believers do not know god and so when perilous times come we scrounge around and we begin to act and and manifest antichrist qualities second peter chapter 3 and verse 18 i believe it is apostle peter was encouraging us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ grow in grace and the knowledge of our lord jesus christ in fact john 17 john 17 give it to us verse 3 jesus was praying and he said this is eternal life that they may know thee the only through god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent please get my teaching knowing god we may not have the time to go into it but i've done a teaching knowing god you can go to our our platforms i think it should be on our youtube channel also knowing god i teach there that there are four biblical provisions to know god number one is scripture the first way we are given the allowance to know god is through the study of scripture and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation are we together you must know god paul even at the end of his life at the height of his apostolic ministry and his achievement he said that i may know him believers must contend for the knowledge of god an experiential knowledge of god not just a theoretical knowledge not that we just sing and then when times come because let me tell you this if you are alive in these days that we are living in your faith will be tested once and again. Your stamina will come from your persuasion as to who you know God to be. Are we together? Number one, scripture. I taught here in that teaching that the first way we know God is scripture. What does the scripture reveal? That Jesus said, ye err not knowing the scriptures. He says, for the scriptures testify of me. So you can use the scripture to know God. What about God do you know from scripture? Number one, his character. When you study scripture, you learn the character of God. Number two, when you study scripture, you learn his modus operandi, the way God behaves. His character and his methodologies. So if you do not submit yourself to the study of scripture, and unfortunately, I'm, I admit to you that our generation is gradually becoming lazy as far as our passion for the word is concerned. We pray, and there are many people who pray, 
but the value of your prayer is derived from the understanding of scripture if you are not sound in scripture your prayer will largely be shadow boxing is the reason why there is tremendous dissipation of spiritual energy but little result because a man can pray amiss even if with passion are we together this is very important so number one we know god through scripture number two the second biblical pathway to the knowledge of god is by studying his names the names of god are a capture a revelation of the multi multifaceted dimensions of him all of the names of god as revealed in scripture they are hosts of a revelation about god who shall i tell pharaoh had sent me he said i am that i am every time they encountered god in a spectacular way they named that place, they built a monument around that experience and captured that experience in a name. So that every time they wanted to see that dimension again, they would invoke that name. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Number three, how do we know God as revealed from the Bible? The third way we know God is through the study of Jesus. Jesus himself the Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God. Hebrews chapter 1. When you read verse 3, verse 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets. He said, as in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he had appointed to be heir of all things. By whom also he made the walls. Verse 3. It says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. So Jesus Christ is God incarnate. John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, he says, was the word and the word was with God. And he says, the word was God. Verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. So when you study Jesus, you learn God by observing Jesus. I've taught you, many of you who have paid attention to these teachings, um, I taught you that Jesus came for many reasons. He did not just come to die alone. There were many other things he came to achieve. One of the principal ministries of Jesus when he walked upon the earth was he came as a marking script to correct our understanding about God. Because until Jesus came, there was no accurate knowledge of God by any man. The prophet saw in types and shadows. And there was a mix of many things. A Judaism and all of this. There were many things they, they credited to God that God had no hand in it. Are we together? When you read the Old Testament from the lens of the prophets, you will come up with a plethora of confusions. Because it, it misrepresents God on many grounds. And so Jesus came as a correction. So everything the Bible tells you in the Old Testament that God was, we study Jesus as a verification system. If the Bible says God is love, we have a right to probe God until we see love captured in Jesus. So everything we did not see captured in the ministry of Jesus, we are safe to assume that is not consistent with the character of God, even if revealed by the prophets. Are you learning now? So more than just dying for your sin, the Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. The word finisher there is perfecter of our faith, not just ending it. He begins it and perfects it. There are many things we have been told about God that are wrong. And if you do not learn your knowledge of God from Jesus, you see, it will affect your relationship with God because you will not be able to relate with God being that you do not know certain things about God. For instance, the Bible tells us that God is love. That is a powerful revelation. It should guard your heart as you deal with God. He is not just some angry person waiting with passion to vent vengeance on you. No. If that is your mindset about God, someone deceived you. You have to study God and study Jesus. 
Are we together? Yes. If you ever receive the comfort that God finds joy in your failure and mediocrity, then we look at Jesus. Did he ever see anybody who was in a condition that was not ideal and left that person? And if he did leave that person, what was the basis of leaving the person? There were people who were not healed in the Bible, for instance. And the Bible credits they are not being healed. Not to the unwillingness of Jesus to heal them, but to the, their unbelief. The Bible says Jesus even marveled. Many times in scripture, the Bible will say they brought him the oppressed, he healed them all. When he saw the blind, he healed them. That means this knowledge of God will sponsor your dealings with God. That every time you pray, you know that at the back end of your prayer is a passionate father willing to answer as revealed by Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He stopped. So if I call upon God, I expect an answer because Jesus came as a revelation of God. Are we together now? Many of us have come from, respectfully speaking, different denominations and different Christian circles and most of our models as far as painting the picture of God is concerned even by well-meaning people have been corrupted and aberrated and there is something about our understanding of God that needs adjustment so we look to Jesus we learn God as we study Jesus literally reading the Gospels from Matthew, Mark, Luke and John exposing jesus the bible does not hide anything about jesus it exposed his personal life it exposed his relationship life he exposed his ministerial life it exposed his understanding of family so every whenever you are looking for god's perspective on any matter study the earth work of jesus how did he approach those matters this is how we know god and then the last key that i gave in that teaching as to how we know God is experience. Experience. Experience is very powerful. It can teach us some things about God. You want to stand in these days, you must know God. There are many preachers who do not know God. Can I tell you this? Men and women of God, the confidence from whence we'll be able to teach God's people will be derived from our personal experience with God. It will be difficult for you to advocate certain dimensions of God if it is not a revelation to you. For instance, it is a risk to shout and say God can heal when you have not pressed into that dimension because there will always be a need for a demonstration of that which you believe. Does God deliver people from calamity? Oh, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. It's in your Bible. So I know and I am safe to believe, not assume, that God can deliver. The psalmist said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise. So shall I be saved from my enemies God is able to deliver I need not be afraid what can man do to me now let me tell you the truth believers if you do not believe this anything will kill you anything will sweep you off your feet you will need to know that God is not only a savior he can be a shield and a defense that's what the Bible says it says the name of the Lord his names, his various offices are a strong tower. You can enter into any of the name as a revelation and you are secured. Let me tell you, the evil that is physical that you see is by far less than the spiritual evils around you. When you hear that maybe there are terrorists or whatever, that is enough to bring fear. But whether or not you hear anything, the evils that happen per 24 hour is enough to sweep and destroy you. You see the way people die around like chickens. Somebody just gets off headache, headache and he dies. The psalmist gave us a revelation already. He says, thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. Have you seen them? But they fly every day, including now as I'm talking. 
the noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted in noonday. The first spiritual strategy for surviving perilous times is that you must know God. You must know God. There are things I know about God and I trust him. Ah. You see, let me tell you, when you have not had an experience where your knowledge of God now defends you, your confidence may not be strong. Are we together now? Yes. It takes the knowledge of God to do the things that we do it takes the knowledge of God to go the places that we go what do you know about God what do you know about God with respect to his power to save what do you know about God with respect to his power to preserve what do you know about God with respect to his power to redeem what do you know about God with respect to his mercy, with respect to his grace. What do you know about God with respect to his judgment? Listen, these days are not the days for playing games with your spiritual life. You must obtain grace to settle down and become a student of scripture and learn. It was the psalmist that said, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. He was not taught it was something he found. There was something Jacob did not know about God that made him abort a powerful experience that would have changed his life. As a result of not having that experience, he paid the price for 20 years in the house of Laban. The next time God will come, he had learned through pain something about God that if your name and what is on your head is not changed, you can suffer and be under duress. And he held him. He said, I will not let you go. He was not holding his hands. He was holding his integrity. God, I know you. Leave me for the day break it. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Hear how God blesses. What is your name? I am Jacob. Thou shalt no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. He touched the whole of his tie and blessed him. The Bible says he called the name of the place Peniel. And the sun arose for him. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Please take the time to know God. The journey that you are about to embark on for the remaining days that we have to spend on this earth is a journey that will thrive on personal revelation. Thank God for the ministry of the fivefold. But as they dish you that word, you have to transfer that theoretical knowledge that does not stand the test of time. You need to walk as a believer who is confident in the fact that he knows God. He said, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Is that true? Let not the strong man glory in his strength. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But he said, let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me. When you know about God and someone brings a negative prophecy for you and says, my brother, I had a dream. You are dead tomorrow. The person may not be wrong, but there is something you know about God. It gives you security. When Isaiah the prophet came and spoke over Hezekiah, put your house in order, you will die. He said, prophet, I respect you. Go, leave me and God. I know what to tell him. He turned his face to the wall and said, remember. Is there no book of remembrance he was saying? Remember how I've worked diligently. And God changed that prophecy. If you don't know God, people will use the prophetic to cheat you. Especially in the days we are living in. There are people who became defeated because of something they heard. Someone will look at you and tell you, oh, Zaria, unfortunately, there is nothing. Your life is, you are just miserable. Your life is over. No school, no work, no money, no nothing, no favor. And you believe that because there is something about God you do not know. Where is the God that made light in Goshen when there was darkness in Egypt? You see, the people that do know their God shall be strong 
and shall do exploits. Is someone learning? Number two, very quickly. In fact, let me finish up number one. I wrote here, commit to the ministry of study, the ministry of prayer, and the ministry of fellowship. Please write it down. There are four things that the apostles did, the early church did. I will, I, will, I will come there shortly, but let's just look at it. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. There are four basic things. And they continued steadfastly. Number one, in the apostles' doctrine. Number two, fellowship. Number three, breaking of bread. Number four, prayers. This is what they did continually. This is not the time to run away from the study of the word. This is the time to obtain grace from God to be disciplined and sit with the word. You are a student here, don't say Asu is on strike. If you are in, 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 you know, in ABU or any of the institutions that is on strike, don't use the opportunity to waste your time away and just say, I keep gisting. No, no. That is see it as a destiny opportunity to catch up. That there are things you would not have had the time to do. Now you can wake up in the morning and you can stay with the word. It takes time to know God. There is no fast knowing God. Mm -mm. It is line upon line, precept upon precept. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, everything that fights your passion for the study of the word, fights your passion for prayer this too it has destroyed your potential for growth let me repeat that everything that fights your passion for the constructive study of the word of god fights your passion for prayer has fought your potential for spiritual growth no matter how spiritual you think you are the formula remains the same acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to the word, to prayer, and to the ministry of the word. Acts 6, 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. That's what built the apostles. If your prayer life has gone down, your word study life has gone down, then this is the meeting between today and tomorrow. You must obtain grace from God to flog it out with destiny and fan these dimensions of your life back on fire. Apostle, but my mother is a prayer warrior. Let me assure you, there are wells that nobody can dig for you, especially in the days that are coming. Are we together? Mama can intercede for you, but when you stand face to face with real life situation, it is the people that know their God, not their neighbor's God, their God. Run away from spiritual laziness and obtain grace from God to settle down in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, what is the second spiritual strategy for these perilous times? Are you ready? I wrote here, walk, W-A-L-K, walk and live by the principles of the word of God. You want to thrive and command dominion even in these perilous times, you must walk and live by the principles of the word of God. Living your life just from a cultural standpoint from a sociological standpoint, from a humanistic standpoint, just trusting your brain entirely will land you in disaster. You must submit yourself to walk and live by the principles of the word of God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, Jesus himself was speaking, resisting the devil now in his temptation. He answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We don't just live by food. The quality of our lives and destinies are dependent on not just our knowing. Remember the Bible says, now that you know these things, it says, happy are you 
if you do them there are people who are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth listen it is one thing to study and to know but you must obtain grace to not only engage it but to live it as a lifestyle your immunity in these times is derived from your living and walking by the principles of the scripture psalms 89 and verse 34 is god speaking to someone psalm 89 and verse 34 hmm. you are the covenant keeping god you are the covenant keeping god Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. It says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. This is a very powerful information about God. Do you know what covenant living is? Covenant living means to live with the consciousness that my victory and my excelling in life depends on me and God. Not God alone. Not me alone. My living and my excelling depends on my perpetual partnership between me and God. What is my own role? To walk in keeping with the provisions that command and commit his integrity what is his own part to make his word true in the life of the obedient believer a covenant consciousness is a consciousness of partnership that it never depends on me alone and that it does not depend on god alone as far as my excelling in life is concerned please look up please look up if you do not make up your mind to live by the principles of the word of God, I assure you, no matter what you see in scripture, your life will perpetually be the opposite of all that you see. Because it is not just those who see it, but those who walk in keeping with the principles that commit God. Just because God is love, just because God is compassionate, does not mean he randomly commits himself to people. No. You have heard me say that scripture defines the boundary of our commitment or God's commitment to the believer. God is not indefinitely committed to the believer just without boundary. No. God himself submits to his word. The Bible says that he exalts his word even above his office. He can be moved over your situation. But it takes his word to move his hand to your rescue. Now, this is the balance to this dimension of God that most believers do not know. They rest in the fact that God is love. God forbid. He can't watch me suffer and just mind his business. You are joking. This God, until you understand the character and the power that was invested in the word of God. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth is out of course. I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Please look up. Written in this scripture are promises. I have taught you this. That the Bible contains three things essentially. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. Every time you open your Bible, you are interacting with three dimensions of spiritual realities. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. The modus operandi of the kingdom. Number three, prophecies. So before you ask God to come and play his role in your life, make sure that you have walked in keeping this is the whole idea of living by faith four times in scripture the bible says the just shall live 
by faith. In one of the expressions, it says the just shall live by his faith. So you have to find out what God has said. And then find out the conditions connected. Listen carefully. Don't just find out what God has said alone. Uh -uh. Finding out what God has said alone is not a fair Bible study. You must find out the point of commitment. That is a balanced study of scripture. What has God said? Deuteronomy chapter 28 for instance from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass. Give it to us please. If thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all that I command you this day that the Lord God will set you on high above the nations of the earth. Next verse. It says and these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you. So don't just claim blessings and say I am above and not beneath. That is true but that's not entirely true. Have you worked in keeping with the conditions that release the power of God on that wise? Are we together? Yeah. The Bible says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and your vats to overflow. Don't claim overflow if you are not working with the conditions. This is where believers keep mocking themselves. God is not committed where your obedience has not been released. If it be thou, bid me come. The man would have said, I know you, you are a kind God. He would have remained here. Bid me come. Now I take that step. It is my responsibility to walk. And he took that step. And even when he sang, God took responsibility and brought him back up again. Someone's life is changing. In the name of Jesus Christ. For instance, please look up. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't just say, oh, I know that I'm the redeemed. Have you said it? It is a principle that whatever you are, say it. It's not just about the redeemed alone. Anything you believe that God has said you are, he says among the many principles that makes it manifest in your life, you must say it. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Are we together now? Many people know so, but they don't say so. The power is released at the point of speaking. And God said, and there was. Not and God wanted, not and God taught. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. There are many believers who keep speaking evil, speaking a lot of wrong things about their lives. And can I tell you this? Please look up. Most of you sadly believe that the more matured you are in the kingdom, the more you throw away these things, you call them elementary, so to say. Why do I need to speak the word of God? The times that we live in will surprise you if you ignore the simplicity of the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Everything God has made you, say it, not once, perpetually. Philemon 1 and verse 6 that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ and the greatest way to acknowledge is by verbalizing it Lord you have favored me I decree and declare that I remain favored I am blessed in the city I am blessed in the country a thousand falls by my side ten thousand by my right side none will hurt me with my eyes will I see and behold can I tell you, God does not do what you want. God only does what he says. Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah. 21 1 Genesis. Visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. If God has not said it, if he has not spoken it, the basis for performance is not there. Is someone learning? You must learn how to live by the principles of the word of God. I've taught you several principles through the years and connecting with our Sunday services and all that you receive even during Friday services here. They are, we continue to teach principles that help you. Let me give you an instance. Please look up. Let's assume you are in 
a financial situation right now or you are in any situation of loss anytime you are experiencing losses in your life it's not business or investment or job that brings you out go and read your bible from genesis to Re to revelation it is the responsibility of the prophetic that is god's authorized bailout system out of anything that is lost alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it and the axe head floated now when you live by the principles of the kingdom you live by this he spake a parable that men ought always to pray Luke 18 and verse 1 and not to faint if you are not prayerful you are already violating the principles of the kingdom prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is not for preachers prayer is for men so the moment you realize that you are a man the Bible mandates that you pray being prayerful is is not is not um how do i put it now it's a prerequisite for an excelling life whether you are an intercessor or not kingdom principles anything you want to build in your life you require wisdom it's a through wisdom is a house built by understanding it is established and through knowledge the rooms are filled with every pleasurable thing most of us have not found the place of wisdom we have not seen the excellency of wisdom in fact the bible puts it this way it says christ is the power of god and christ is the wisdom of god when the anointing manifests it manifests as the power of god and the wisdom of god there are issues in your life that is not power you need you need wisdom there are issues in your life that you need power it is still the ministry of the anointing that when the anointing is released it is manifested as the power of god and also the wisdom of god don't give the assignment of wisdom to power are we learning now yeah. kingdom principles apostle i don't have any friend i think it's just because i love god no the bible says he that wants friends must show himself friendly if you violate that principle you may be the most anointed person in your life you will never have anyone willing to invest their lives into yours let me tell you this please look up the time has come for us to ask yourself the values that i practice and the principles that i live by where do they come from let God be true and every man a liar. When I came into Zaria, I was just looking around and you know, I've, I've received so many text messages from people, apostle times are hard, finances, things are down as we are right now, we don't even know. And let me tell you, I sympathize with this, but can I tell you, my dear people, we are not the first to be at times like this. There was a time in the Bible they said money failed. Money failed that people came and said buy us by the immutability of God's counsel if it is true that you engage the principles that that make for God's financial resources to come to you you will marvel and wonder let me give you a few of the principles number one there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth, the Bible says. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. But that is not the only principle. Principle number two, the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before. So if you scatter alone and you are not valuable, you will still suffer because the equation is not complete. A lazy man will not plow by reason of the weather and he will beg in harvest. It is still part of the principle. Don't pick part of it. Pick the whole counsel. The challenge with believers is that we pick the most convenient part of kingdom principles that suit us and we find out it does not work. You must embrace the whole counsel that releases that dimension of God you desire. Convenient or not. That is where the grace of God comes in. So that where your strength would ordinarily not be able to help you through, you can now obtain that enabling grace. Is someone learning now? If the only thing you do is tithing and giving, dear people, hear me, resources will come, but you will not perpetuate wealth that way. There is a place of value. There is a place of relationships. There is the wisdom of increase. There is the law of management. These are all principles together. 
that make for increase which one have you neglected how about longevity do you know that there are kingdom principles that are allotted for longevity the first law of longevity is honor to parents in the lord it says honor your father and your mother that your days may be long comma and it may be well with you it is a terrible thing for your days to be long and it's not well with you because you will pray for death longevity is useless if it comes with a plethora of pain so our society that has been trained to dishonor people spiritually and physically dishonor elderly people they are not intelligent they didn't go to school you are you are authorizing the realm of the spirit to cut short your life what is the second principle for longevity i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing choose life the first way to choose life is to verbalize it then in addition to it you walk in keeping with the principles that are pro-life for instance taking care of your body when you take care of your body it is your commitment to tell god and the realm of the spirit that you intend to live long you are careless with your body eat anything drink anything you are signing up for death is someone hearing yes another principle of longevity guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issue of life job said the things that i feared most has come upon me you must protect your mind is god teaching us now yes we must be honest and strong and matured to live by the principles of the kingdom i submit to you that many believers are not living by the principles of the kingdom apostle i want to excel okay show me the principle you know about excelling in life because the bible relates excellent to something called an excellent spirit have you embraced it the name of the lord is not only great it is excellent oh lord our god how excellent is your name to excel means to surpass ordinary standards and excellence has principles one of the principles of excellence is to be thorough attention to details if you are not a thorough person in your life you have neglected the law of excellence there will be a side effect are we together now apostle i want to see favor in my life show me what you know about favor i know god favors people you are right but that will not bring you favor god grants favor i have asked him he will give me yes prayer is only one of the five keys that control favor the first law of favor is honor the second law of favor is productivity the third law of favor is relationships you see that the fourth law of favor is impartation you can't do one over six and expect favor to be lavishly at work in you the real secret for favor is understanding proverbs 13 15 it says good understanding procured favor but the way of the transgressor is hard so there are many things we just shout around that does not speak in our lives because we are not working in keeping are you understanding point two now that you want to thrive in these days your life you must bring together all of the keys of the kingdom that you know and engage them with understanding how about divine health is there such a reality as divine health absolutely but what are the keys what are the keys number one the first law of divine health look up please the first law of divine health is your words your words your words very important your words let the weak say i am strong your words because when it has to do with living you live through food and words you are eating well you are not speaking well you will still die words 
I shall not die. Believe and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's my confession even at this time. That I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. As simple as this sounds, even when you are sleeping, that word is on you. When the spirit of death comes, you are sleeping, but the word is awake. It says, what are you doing here? It, because there are rules of engagement, even in the realm of the spirit. Just because you are sleeping does not mean the word sleep. They leave. Satan cometh to me, Jesus said, and he found nothing. Jesus died because he laid down his life, not because he was overpowered. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. See, I may not have all the control I need over who gives me what and what I eat. So before it arrives, I prophesy. Shali No, I have no covenant with poison. I have no covenant with death in the pot. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Ah, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Prophesy one time to your destiny. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Don't wish it. Say it. Well, Apostle, I don't want to speak like that. I don't want to sound all this Christian jingoism. I assure you, when that arrow leaves our place, because we will drive it through our words, it won't go back. It will still be roaming around, looking for who is careless. Don't just laugh. Take seriously what I'm saying. There are people who have died cheaply. Can I tell you the truth? Especially if you plan to serve God seriously, your life will perpetually be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Do you know the amount of prophecies I've received in my life in the last three or four years? Apostle, be careful. By genuine prophets. I remember one day somebody I know, not in this nation, a very genuine prophet, Everything he has told me happened accurately to the digit. And he said, Apostle, be careful. I saw an attack on you that day I was going somewhere. I told him, thank you. Ah, it's not easy to die like that. Oh. So don't think I'm just here talking nonsense with you. You ask the devil. It's only when we go to heaven, we will know how many times they have concluded that today, finally, and two weeks later, you are still moving as if the devil does not exist. Look, let me tell you this. Please look up. Do you know that don't feel bad if you've lost a loved one? That's not the idea. Now that you are alive, focus on what God is doing in your life. Do you know that many, many days and months before people actually die, they are already dead in the realm of the spirit? Go and read your Bible in the book of Esther and you'll find out that Haman consulted with diviners to know the day that they will strike. Job chapter 1 tells us that a meeting was happening in the realm of the spirit and they were concluding the destiny of a man. The man woke up one morning not knowing that that day disaster will start. Before it arrives, let your word stand as a city, as a defense and say, thus far have you come. His father did not know this, so you took him. The mother did not know this, so you took her. The sisters did not know this, but now let your words be a defense over you. Can I tell you this? Don't feel offended. We thank God for those who have gone. But hear me. 
the Bible does not say believers die the Bible says believers sleep and Paul said those who sleep sleep at night don't come in the morning wanting me to sleep no we sleep at night I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day day is for walk that is the scripture that you bring day is for walk why do you want me to sleep in the day please know this can I tell you it is the gun you see or the knife that you see that makes you afraid the one you don't see is the one machines cannot diagnose you just know there is pounding headache and machines say you are absolutely fine absolutely fine and you know that something is wrong some of you by this revelation you are getting now the devil is already threatened because you don't know what may have been on the schedule Oh, their plans will fail again and again because the word of God stands and lives forever Are you learning? Please sit down. You must learn to live by the word. Living carelessly, just living by instincts, by feelings will be a risk in this time. For instance, the Bible says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It's a risk to not be close to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Death can call you like an invitation. And you can just carry yourself and get into trouble there are people who left their houses because of insensitivity and lack of discernment they went and landed into trouble somebody stole and just when police arrived they were gathering everybody there. you were in your house minding your business and you say something push me as soon as you came out they said join them you see how people look for trouble you need high level sensitivity these are seasons where not every open door is God's door for you it's not Satan does not only close doors he opens doors he can open a door for you you call it breakthrough and go and crash land yourself in trouble people are just jumping around and say, ah, there's one business like this everybody is doing it no prayer no counsel the Bible says in the multitude of counsel there is safety. You don't ask, you jump into it. And the next thing you just hear that they are calling you. You call your parents, say you're of age, please go. And you go and stand there and you begin a circle of pain. Is someone learning now? Yes. I remember one time in Zaria here, somebody told me, that he used to hear a voice he didn't know anything about the realm of the spirit and he would hear a physical voice this is the voice of a departed person who had gone calling him you know and he thought it was a dream you know like your sister you like you are, are dreaming you are awake and i told him i said listen when you get up don't just say yes and whatever it is yes is giving it permission you take your bible and say the living and the dead have nothing in common there is there is there is a gulf of separation answer yes to the call of death and die for no reason you wake up and there is a demonic dream they are throwing you inside coffin they are burying you when you get up don't say i'm finished in the name of jesus i take authority over that dream everything remains as a fiction in the realm of the spirit until your faith allows it to find expression here say after me in the name of jesus i decree and declare that I am exceptional say in the name of Jesus I am anointed say in the name of Jesus I am blessed in the name of Jesus I am favored in the name of Jesus the Word of God defends me I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord decree and declare say men are sent by God to hold my hands and to lift me that when men say there is a casting down I make a declaration that for me and my family there will be a lifting up in the name of Jesus Christ. That's how you live. That's how you live. You must convince yourself 
that this is the integrity of God's word. Please sit down. Let's touch on the remaining two very quickly. Number three, what is the third strategy for these perilous times? Are you ready? Number three, embrace unity and the power of corporate Christian living. Embrace unity and the power of corporate Christian living. Hmm. Write it down, please. Embrace unity and the power of corporate Christian living. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 24 and 25. There is a dimension of God's power that is invested in unity and in a Christian community living. In fact, you've heard me say this, that the key to sustaining kingdom values is Christian community living. While it is true that we must be people of the secret place, when it has to do with excelling in the cosmos, believers must know the power of unity and the power of corporate living. Isolation is a risk, especially at times like this. It says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Verse 25. Let us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Can I tell you this? Corporate living, community living is a very powerful principle for living and surviving in the cosmos especially among believers most believers neglect the fellowship of the brethren they neglect interacting with other a larger body of believers and sometimes that happens in this deception and isolation of wanting to know God for myself. On one hand, that is right, I just taught you. But on another, there is a difference between solitude and isolation. Solitude is good because you are spending time with God. Isolation is the devil deceiving you to strike you. Now, watch this. How many of you have seen coal? When you are burning coal to cook with red hot coal. Just carry the tongue and pick one hot one and just drop it. Don't do anything. What begins to happen to it? It goes down. This is what is happening to many of you. You've heard me say that one of the ways that the devil destroys and damages your spiritual life is to give you an impression that you are superior and better than everybody. What can I receive from my pastor? I have more revelation than him. I, the man is not even doing all, And that pride will bring believers into a point of isolation. That's it. Let me tell you this. Community living is, a, is powerful because among the many things it does, it can help to bring checks and balances to your life. Somebody can easily observe when you practice community Christian living that something has been wrong with your prayer life. Everybody will be afraid, but one or two people will have the courage to approach you in love and say, I've noticed that um, you are not really open for prayer. What's the problem? And the Holy Spirit will echo through their words and jack up your prayer life. It is dangerous when you are alone, especially in pride. Because even at the height of your fall, Satan will still flatter you that you are all right until the day he strikes you once and is done with you. Are we together? Yes. Community living. When you read your Bible, Jesus was never, there were few times when he was alone and only to retreat and sleep. Even as Jesus angels ministered to him they always came around him and then he was with his disciples and he was with the brethren read your bible time for koinonia no 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 there's nothing there i'm not there's um i would just i would download the message one day that's how it starts the trap of deception community living is powerful even from a security standpoint for for years in this ministry and i think we still do we have the database by the grace of god of the membership 
so that if for any reason there is a call for any security response i think that 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 um that became weak when this dnd thing and the rest and started coming if not i remember and we had enjoyed it the first time we used it was after one post-election violence i think it was in 2011 or so and then the other one that happened I, I can't remember now what what year it happened it is very very important community living can help to protect you there are many of you who for instance i'm showing you wisdom keys you can get up just because you have some money and enter a community where you are the only person of faith and now dwell smuggle yourself in one apartment where everybody is not around only you the thief does not need to hide he will open the door and say i'm a thief i'm here just come out and lie down and keep shouting while i steal because nobody will hear you from that point these are wisdom principles that believers don't have there are times that some of you have sent me text messages and say i am at so-so place and i told them no look for a house super so-so place i can support you from me I, 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 are you getting blessed now I'm, I'm trying to be very sincere with you especially if you're a family person you are moving to a region there are things you should look at the proximity to security aid proximity to medical aid proximity to the market these are some of the things they teach this in architecture urban and regional planning this is not even just about spirituality there are factors that you look at how many minutes will it take you so that you don't die the death of a fool there are many people who would have been rescued on many grounds if only they were within a space and a community where they will help him there was a time that the apostle wanted to enter a city and he was afraid he said do not be afraid i have many people in this city are we together it is very very important there are many things we have done as a ministry by the privilege of god's grace we've invested through the years to maintain strategic relationships first out of a heart of love but then by wisdom to maintain relationship across religions and the rest with people as much as God will grant us that grace. And it has worked in many regards. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it, See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Kos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and look at her. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.